Today we're going to get at it. Today we're going to make a teapot. So we got to be on our best behavior today. And I started with a two pound lump of clay. It's a small teapot, uh, plenty big enough for this. And um, let's get started, shall we? We're going to center this lump of clay. too far down inside. We want to leave a base for us to trim. We don't want that base to be too narrow. We want it to be teep on. Okay. okay, we're going to collar this in, bring these sides back. More or less on the top of the walls. Now we're just going to pull this up. Now, what I'm doing down here is I've undercut the base of that wall and I'm pushing out from the inside. I don't want to leave a big lump of clay there or the world's heaviest teapot. Teapots have to be filled with hot boiling water, so we want them light. cylinder twice. I like to start shaping. It is fine if it takes more than two pulls for you. And I'm going to fashion a nice little lip up here to hold my lid. don't want this to be too narrow. I will have to get in inside this teapot just a little. And so the size of your hand does sort of impact what you can do here. Now I've sort of gotten an idea. Well, I've got a little crumb there, sorry. So I've sort of roughly fixed the bottom and the top edge, and now I'm just pushing out from the inside with my two middle fingers, and I'll use my rib just on the outside to smooth out my throwing ridges. don't want this gallery, is what it's called, uh, to be too 
tall off the body. Your, your lid will sit too tall away from the body, which will make it that much easier to launch into space when you're trying to pour a cup of tea. One of the things that makes teapots so challenging is we're trying to put together three parts and we want them to sort of look like they all belong to each other. The gold standard would be if they looked like they grew onto that body of the teapot, that would be excellent. Sometimes you can get that and sometimes you just have to wait for another, another pot. Okay. Got these little grooves here I want to get out. I'll be fighting them when I put my spell on otherwise. Okay. Now we gotta gonna do our little measurement thing here. Check. If you'd accidentally warp that, they wouldn't be the same. Uh, we're gonna take our long thread. Just take a little off of that. And boom. So there's our body of our teapot and we'll put that over here. Now we need to make ourselves a lid. less under a pound for this lid. I want to have plenty uh, so that I can discard what I don't need. It's not good to get it almost made and come up a little short. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open it up a little bit, keep this big wide rim of clay where I can form that rim. Let's see how we're doing. So that's the mark that we want our lid to fit inside of. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to With that, I'm pushing down roughly to the same height as my inside, and then I'm going to fix this set. I want this rim to be more or less horizontal.
Let's see how it's done. Ooh. Pretty good, pretty good. We're gonna push out just a little bit. I'm pushing out from down here at the base, which should allow me then to bring this top back over just a little. I have a straight metal rib that I use. Okay, better, better, better. Now, uh, this is probably a little Extending a little further than we might like. Now we we'll want to fix that little scruff there. And I don't want that edge of that lid to be sharp and unpleasant. It'll just chip on you right away. So I'm pushing, here's a better view, pushing with my index finger while the other two fingers just kind of hold both sides of that rim, keep it in place. Because I'm putting a lot of pressure on there. It'll fold up like an accordion if I'm not careful. Now I'm going to take off a little of that scruff here. Okay. So there's our rib. Let's cut that off. And. So the puzzle, it's not very big, but it's a doozy, and it's going to be our spout. A lot of different ways to uh, go about making spouts, so this is just one. pretty much put you in good shape to do anything else you might need. So the lid on that teapot was under one pound, and this is a third of a pound. 200 grams. Okay, and we're going to open it up. And what we're going to try and make is something sort of like a, a small bottle. Okay. And most of it will cut away during the construction of the teapot. But we need to uh, have all this extra shape and form to give us the part of the teapot spot that we need.
opening, so we have to collar it back in to make it more narrow. Now, this is going to do another thing for it. It's going to help to thin out the walls of that spout. The only tool we're going to need is our needle tool. Put that in there, and I can push against the pressure of my needle tool from the outside, and that'll force the clay up, and it'll force the clay to get thinner. starts to get too long, which you'll only be able to determine afterwards through an intuition, but nevertheless, you just chop off that top and bring some more up until it's the diameter, size, and shape you want for your spout. I'm going for a spot that's about the diameter of my pinky. Yes, I've got fat little fingers. What's good about using the needle tool like this is that I'm not adding a lot of water. So this isn't getting as soft as it would if I was just going over it and over it again. This is a little long. Let's turn that down. Now what you never want to see on a teapot spout is a trumpet shape, okay? And a lot of beginners do this. They, they flare out the top like this, like a little trumpet. That is the world's worst pouring spout. Don't do it. Of course, if you want to have a doofus teapot, go ahead yourself out. You won't like it. It'll dribble everywhere. It sure will. Okay, so we're going to chop off all that. I'm going to give it just a little bit of a bend here before I Take it off. Okay. And 